what exactly is bookkeeping? So the, te the textbook definition involves a lot of polysyllabic jargon that would make even the most ardent accountant's eyes glaze over. But let's cut through the waffle, shall we? Bookkeeping is simply the act of recording your past financial escapades so you can make slightly less disastrous decisions in the future. It's like a financial diary only with fewer confessions about your secret biscuit addi addiction and more numbers. Now, how does one perform this riveting task for their small business? Well, buckle up, because we're about to embark on a six-step journey that's marginally more exciting than watching paint dry. Step one, gather source documents. These are the breadcrumbs of your financial trail. Invoices, receipts and other scraps of paper that you've been stuffing into shoeboxes or using as makeshift coasters. Each of these documents should have a date, a buyer, a seller, an amount and what was bought or sold. So it's like a financial crime scene and you're the detective piecing together the evidence. So most people these days rely on bank statements to tell their financial story. It's a bit like using cliff notes instead of reading the actual book, but it works. So just remember, yeah. cash transactions are the ninja of the financial world, invisible to bank statements. So unless you fancy trying to recall why you withdrew 50 quid three months ago at 2am from cash point at Nando's, it's best to use your debit or credit card for everything. Step two. Categorise your transactions. This is where we separate the financial wheat from the chaff. So we've got five main categories. Assets, liabilities, equity, revenue and expenses. So it's like sorting your laundry, only with less potential for turning all your whites pink. So assets are things you own, liabilities are things you owe and often wish you didn't. Equity is what's left if you sold everything and paid all your debts, often a depressingly small number. Revenue is money coming in, which is never enough really, and expenses, money going out, which is always too much. So to help with this thrilling categorization process, I recommend using software like Xero. That's my favorite one, most of my clients have it. It's like having a personal assistant for your finances, only it doesn't judge you for that impulse purchase of a life-size cardboard cutter of Alan Sugar. Step three. Reconcile your transactions. If you don't do that, then your accounts are going to be wrong because um, the transactions will be in your bank statements, which are not in your nominal ledger. So you need to reconcile to get everything in and to get uh, your accounting software nominal ledger agreed to your bank statements. This is where we make sure every pound is accounted for like a financial game of where's Wally. So you start with the bank statement and match each transaction to what's in your accounting software. It's a bit like doing a jigsaw puzzle, only instead of a pretty picture at the end, you get the joy of knowing your book's balance. Try to contain your enthusiasm. Now I know what you're thinking. Keith, this sounds about as much fun as a root canal treatment. And you're right, but Remember, proper bookkeeping can be the difference between your business thriving and ending up as another statistic in a government report on failed small businesses. So, grab a cup of tea, put on some motivational music, and let's continue this exhilarating journey through the world of small business finances. Now, if you're still awake and haven't succumbed to the, to the soporific effects of financial jargon, let's press on to step four, preparing financial statements. So this is where all your meticulous categorising and reconciling pays off, like the grand finale of a particularly dull fireworks display. So there are three main financial statements you need to worry about. The balance sheet, the income statement and the cash flow statement. So think of them as the holy trinity of bookkeeping, only with less theological significance and more numbers. So the balance sheet, also known as the statement of financial position, because apparently we accountants get paid by the syllable. So this shows your assets, liabilities and equity. It's a snapshot of your business's financial health at a specific moment in time. If your assets don't equal your liabilities plus equity, your balance sheet is out of balance, which is a big no-no. It's like a seesaw where one side is heavier than the other, except instead of childhood fun, you get accounting headaches. 
Next we have the income statement. So this is also called the profit and loss statement or PL for those who prefer their financial terms to sound like a sandwich. This shows your revenue and expenses telling you how profitable you are at any given period. So it's like a financial report card only instead of grades you get to see how much money you've made or lost. Exciting stuff I know. And finally there's the cash flow statement which shows how transactions from your balance sheet affect your cash account. So it's divided into three riveting categories. Cash from operations, financing and investments. It's like a detective novel only instead of who done it, it's where did all the money go? Step five is where things get really wild. Reading your financial statements. I know. Try to contain yourselves. Most businesses fail or succeed based on their financial statements. So it's critical that you review and understand them. It's the difference between having a more profitable business this year than last year and wondering why you can't afford to keep the lights on. The balance sheet is structured with assets listed first, followed by liabilities and equity. So assets are ordered by liquidity, which is a fancy way of saying how quickly you can turn them into cash. That's why cash is always first. It's already cash. Clever that. Liabilities are listed similarly with current liabilities, uh, which are debts due within 12 months before long term liabilities. So it's like a to do list of people you owe money to ordered by how soon they're likely to come knocking. And the equity section so shows the ownership in your business. So it's sometimes referred to as book value or net worth, which is a much nicer way of saying what's left after everyone else has taken their cut. The income statement starts with revenue, also known as the top line, because it's at the top of the statement. Who says accountants aren't creative? Then we subtract the cost of sales, followed by other expenses until we reach the bottom line or net income. So it's like a financial obstacle course with all your money hurtling over expenses until what's left flops exhausted over the finish line. The cash flow statement tracks the cash sloshing in and out of your business. It's broken into those three categories we mentioned earlier, operating, financing and investing. So operating cash flows from the day to day business activities, Financing is from loans and equity, and investing is from, well, investments. So it's like tracking where your pocket money goes, only with more zeros and less sweets. And finally, we reach step six, making decisions based on all this riveting data. Remember, the purpose of bookkeeping isn't just to give accountants job security, it's to help you make better, more profitable decisions. Your balance sheet can tell you about businesses' liquidity and sustainability. For instance, if you have a million pounds in net income, but three months of that is tied up in accounts receivable, you might want to consider offering a discount for early payment. The income statement tells you about your operating performance. If your expenses are creeping up faster than your revenue, it might be time to reconsider that solid gold paperweight you bought for the office. And the cash flow statement? Well... That tells you how much actual cash you have on hand because as we all know profit is opinion but cash is fact you can't pay your bills with profit no matter how impressive it looks on paper in conclusion while bookkeeping might not be the reason you got into business it might just be the reason you stay in business it's the difference between making informed decisions and just guessing and in the world of business guessing is about as effective as using a chocolate teapot so embrace your inner number cruncher, learn to love your ledgers, and remember in the thrilling world of bookkeeping, balance is not just a good idea, it's the law, at least the law of accounting. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a hot date with some depreciation schedules. Try not to be too jealous. And it's all very well having all these numbers coming out of your ears, uh, but, but often the wisdom can be hidden in in the sea of data. So what you really need is lots of graphs, key performance indicators, pie charts, graphs that show you actual against previous years, against budgets, forecasts, ratio analysis, that really brings the data to life. The wisdom, and um, I can set this all up for you using software, um, and then I can give you a report every month and we can have a chat and bring it all to life and that's the way that you 
that's the way that you can make data-driven decisions and protect yourself from risk and grow your company faster and make more profit. So it's well worth doing. Uh, and why don't you get in touch with me via my website, redboxfinancial.com. Just chat, use this chat box there that comes straight to me. And uh, let's explore how I can help you. That's all for now. Bye.